What's up YouTube? So I got a couple requests on my power draw bar and in this video I want to show you exactly how it works and uh, all the pieces that are involved so if you want to try and make one yourself you're going to be able to. Well to start with uh, the point of the power draw bar is to be able to suck your R8 collet up into the spindle and the way that's done is by this draw bar and this is one I had to custom machine um, focus uh, maybe he does it better but <clears throat> 7 16 on this side uh, I think I did a half 24 on this side and that allows the R8 collet to screw onto one side and imagine that that collet's on this end here. As this goes up into the spindle, it will pop through the top and of these Belleville washers. And when that is screwed down with this nut, it's going to compress those Bellevilles and put a, about 1,500 pounds of force into those springs, pushing up, pulling up on this drawbar, which in turn holds the collet up into the spindle and then when you want to release the collet uh, you need a way to compress this stack of discs more than you already compressed them with the nut to hold the collet in place and that's where the drawbar comes or the the power piston comes in um, it's a three stage design meaning that each one of those stainless steel discs is actually a different cylinder uh, and running at 90 psi you take the area of that cylinder times 90 psi times three and that's the amount of force you'll get out of the butt end uh, pushing pushing down on the top of the drawbar one thing to take note is when this draw bar is assembled and it's down in the spindle and we screw this guy on when the piston pushes down on these Bellevilles to release the collet um, you don't want to be pushing directly on this and and having the entire spindle base, all the bearings, be the reactionary uh, anchor for the force. Because then you're constantly actually loading your, your bearings, um, which could wear them out. So, the way you can get around with that is having some kind of a pickup plate. And that's what this piece here is for. A top hat. Because if that pickup plate is below this entire assembly uh, like so this throw that on there what you've just done this is attached through the entire draw bar screwed on the top so when the piston comes and applies force here what's actually happening is the entire power draw bar wants to lift up but these threaded rods are attached to it so you're pushing down with the piston that pushing down wants to lift the draw bar lifts this plate and what does it do it catches that top hat and it compresses the Bellevilles that way you're putting no stress any actual force into the bearings of the entire uh, spindle assembly and of course when it releases this drops back to normal and then you have a little bit of gap that way it could spin and the bell rows can spin without interrupting or uh, interfering with the lift plate well let's get over to the bench and take a look at the draw bar itself so here it is off the mill and you can see the drive piston or the outlet of the piston 
right on the bottom here. This solid piece of rod is continuous, but also discrete, meaning that they're stacked on top of each other for each stage, here, here, and here. So when air comes in, this push the connect fitting, uh, this is in the, I think I'm using quarter inch line, uh, eighth inch NPT, threaded fittings. It, the air, pressurized air goes into each cylinder at the same time, right here on the top for this top stage, here through this plate, uh, which has a through hole that dumps out into the top of this stage here, and then a through hole through the plate that dumps out into the top of this stage here, which magnifies the amount of force you'd get, so that way you're developing much more force than just one pancake piston, because um, they're all pushing on each other until it reaches this point. This guy here, um, you kind of see that these have been uh, given away to decompress when the piston moves inside. This one has not because I want to be able to retract this piston and both of these at the same time by putting 90 PSI here. So on the solenoid I have, it's a five way so that when you push the button, shove it releases air from this line, push air in this line, but when you let off the button, it reverses that, puts air here, sets this to atmospheric or dump. So you're able to slide this back and forth with just one button push. And of course you can see what pressure uh, you're running into the piston. This sounds acting weird and well, it would be acting weird and not releasing if I know I need to be between 95 and about 100. Um, for it to be working the way I like it. So let's, uh, let's take this apart and look at a little more detail. So this guy, all these are compressed together by these four bolts. Um, these guys are just pins that sit down onto the some guides I made and 3D printed on the top of the machine to keep this whole unit in place. Uh, so that way the piston is always in line with the center line of spindle. And those, those were just machined on the lathe, threaded on one end, decked off on the other to create a little pin. Um, and then they're adjustable because this is a fully threaded coupling link. So, um, but the magic is inside here and I can start taking these off get it open screw you too all right get these off of here A tool three and four double duty all right uh, bolt slide out and now everything should be free if we take this bottom assembly off you can see that each stage is its own separate piece like I said before they just stack on top of each other so the bottom of this piston is pushing on the top of this piston and um, if you pop one of these out, everything's also sealed with O-rings in between each stage. Uh, these are about a sixteenth of an inch too big for this actual uh, diameter, but I'm just too lazy to buy the right one. It, it works. Um, aluminum. This is stainless steel, polished as the piston retainer and also sleeve. Uh, so should be able to push this piston out. 
think. Get it. And, yep. And there we go. So, that's all it is. Little piston sleeve. Sandwiched in between these two stages. Create an airtight gap. Seal with O-rings on either side. O-ring on the piston itself. And, actually, there's one more O-ring in... I don't mind this. This wasn't supposed to happen. Um, again, I haven't made the final version of this. So this was this, this is an error. Uh, imagine this was a complete deck surface. The only hole here is the four bolt holes. Um, the carrier retainers that I'll show you later. And this hole for the piston to slide through in there. There actually is an ID uh, O-ring. Which seals the space. Imagine this was on here. You're sealing everything sealed up here so you could push down with pressure to push the piston this way and also you're sealing in between here and there with the piston ring uh, because of that o-ring here that way when you put air for the retraction method into here through that through hole see that little hole here is air goes in there through the plate and then up there to pressurize this chamber and that again pushes the piston up which pushes on that piston and retracts the entire system. So, get this back together now. Um, that's basically, basically it in a nutshell. And we could take the rest of these apart, but they're all the same. Uh, this. That was the third stage. This is the second stage. This is the first stage. Here, that top air comes in here, straight into the piston business end here. That chamber sealed by an O-ring. Uh, another eighth-inch MPT tap, so that way you can read the pressure coming out of that top um, piston. But because the whole thing is connected together all three stages that gauge is actually reading the average pressure um, assuming no lag between all the three cylinders and if we pull this one apart come on and well take the whole piston out uh, yep see what's going on here again air comes in here through the plate that hole right there where it dumps out into the chamber pushes on this piston um, which pushes on that piston which pushes on the third stage so yeah I don't know how many people have these mills or would be interested in me putting together um, plans and drawings uh, it, this, this took a long time to build I, I worked on this for about a year um, and I actually tried 3D printing all this stuff out of ABS, all kinds of materials, trying to see if I can get one of these to work. Because it's a small mill. You don't need that much clamping pressure in order to make the, the drawbar move. Uh, I got close, but it is a failure. So went with the aluminum, and it's, it's been working great for about a year. So, yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any more questions. And... Uh, if you're interested in a kit, I'm out. Later.